Oh, I have a quote. Matt uh, Cox is an unlikely ladies' man. He's diminutive. Diminutive. Five foot six. How about those jeans? That's just you mean. What, what was fucking 2000? Like it was 2000. Those jinkos? 2003. It's 2003. <laughs> Fucker. So, look, so the guy that we stole the house, remember we got the house from? Here's a quote from him in the book, because at the beginning of each chapter, I have a, here's a quote I put, uh, and his name was uh, Stephen Jackson, real estate investor. He put, it's almost impossible to stop them when they're this talented and smart, as smart as these people. Wow. So I have a bunch of quotes from uh, just different things that people have said throughout the whole thing. But I remember I had a quote from him. That's a good quote. Yeah. But what he lacks in height, he makes up for in street smarts. He was very persuasive as far as how we handled things like and talked to people and back. got things I needed the part, and, and he was in charge of a lot. Fucking... So I liked that. I liked that he could, you know, the way he handled things. Matt Cox grew up in Tampa. He showed an early... Whoa! Look at that! How old were you there? 17. Jesus! Studied art in college. In an exclusive phone interview with American Greed, Cox says he always knew art was no way to get rich quick. I mean, I never expected to be an artist because I guess, I don't know, I just didn't think I was ever going to be good enough or make enough money as an artist to survive. His real talent is the art of the con and the knack for finding the perfect sidekick. They were single mothers, divorced. They had money problems. They met him, uh, by and large, in the, on online dating uh, services, uh, where he came across as this uh, sort of uh, smart, uh, well-to-do uh, mortgage broker, uh, you know, who's artistic. And who is this guy? This is Jeff Testerman. He wrote 34, 35 articles on me okay. for the St. Petersburg Times. He's um, kind of like the guy that broke the story. Oh, really? Yeah. Really has a great sense of humor and drives a nice car. I think that the women, while vulnerable, wanted a piece of the pie as well. He could tell that I was, you know, someone that wouldn't tell on him, and you know, he could. But in the meantime, he's offering me all this money and saying he wants to take care of my son and I, send Bryce to a private school, and I'm thinking, you know, okay. I knew her about a month. Finally, you know, I can. I met someone that I knew her about wants to take care of my son and I, and I is capable of, of doing son. it. Yeah. And not really paying attention to the, uh, or not wanting no. No. to pay attention to what he was month. doing and how I he was doing it. I was here online, I knew her about a month. We've been on. Matt Cox decides Rebecca Hall a dozen dates the ideal at most. He shows her a good time, charms her, and takes her to a movie that could be about his own life. Mm. We saw Matchstick Man, and it's about a con. We did see Matchstick Man. A con man? Con artist. Yeah, I think we did see Matchstick Man. Flim Flam Man, Matchstick Man, Loser, whatever you want to call it, take your pick. A lot of it was probably me just wanting to overlook it, more so than being realistic and thinking, okay, what are you getting involved in here? When American Greed returns, Matt Cox and Rebecca Hawk go on the run and swindle the world's biggest bank. Dun, dun, dun. What bank was it? The world's biggest bank, you said. Bank of America? I don't know. This is great so far. Con artist. You prefer con artist over con man? It kind of hits confidence. confidence man. You're an artist and you're a con man. That's true. In Tampa, a rogue mortgage broker named Matt Cox is assuming fake identities to take out multiple mortgage loans on properties he doesn't own, pocketing the money, and making millions in the process. The year is 2003. In a red-hot real estate market, the con man hides in plain sight. Everybody was getting rich. Everybody was flipping property. Jeff Testerman is an investigative reporter with the St. Petersburg Times. In the fall of 2003, he gets a tip from an associate of Matt Cox. And we began to talk. And he suggested things to me uh, the way a good source is supposed to do. He gave me the leads, and I went to the courthouse and got the documentary evidence to show that he was telling the truth. Testerman's source says that Matt Cox, the artist, is using a palette of fake names. 
I called them uh, color-coded aliases. Charles White, James Red, Brandon Green. Uh, Matt Cox had a sense of humor about these things. Cox uses Reservoir the aliases dog. to create shan- Reservoir dogs? Reservoir dogs. I had oh. William Blue, I had Lee Black, I had, Miss, I had uh, Michael White, I had Brandon Green, James Red, uh, David Silver. Um, had a bunch of them. Had a bunch of them. Um, That's where you got it from. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, remember That's I amazing. told you the the guys were ha the guy had to the way I was doing because the people don't exist. So who's going into the closing? Right, right. So I the title companies <clears throat> would let would because I was had because of the mortgage company and we were doing so many mortgages. You could go to a title company if you were the broker and you could say, "Look, my guy's at work. Can I bring him?" The title stuff, the, the title policy, or sorry, can I bring the closing documents to his work and let him sign them? Mm. And they're like, ah, I'm supposed to be there to notarize it. And they, you know, but you know, if you're closing a bunch of loans with this this title company, what are they going to say? It's like, you know, hey man, what's the big deal? We closed fucking ten yeah. loans here last month, twenty. What do you, you know? And they're like, all right, all right. They give me give it to me. So they give me the package, and I'd have Lee Black sign the documents. I'd go sit in the parking lot and sign the fucking documents. And then I'd, they'd ma say, make sure you get a copy of the driver's license. No problem. I get, I'd have a copy of the driver's license. I'd put it down. I'd go back in and I'd hand it to them. And they'd go, thanks, Matt. And then they'd notarize their signature. The guy was never there. They'd hand me all the checks and I'd leave. So I've got all the checks. They've got a closing package. The lender has a closing package. I make three or four payments, five, six payments. And then I let, it the, whole, let the place go into foreclosure. So... What, what ended up happening one time, I, so I never went to a closing. I only ended up going to one closing at SunTrust. I, I borrowed $250,000, and I went in as James Red. But I think it was James Red. Anyway, one time we were doing closings, and someone, somehow or another, the title agent figured out, she figured out that something wasn't right. Like somebody told her. I'm almost positive someone did tell her. Somebody told her, look, these loans that you're closing, these people don't exist. Because suddenly she called the mortgage broker and she said, listen, this guy James Red, the next closing he has, he has to show up. Well, when I made these fake driver's licenses, I would, I would, I need a photo. So I would go online to Hillsborough County's arrest records and I would just get a photo. <clears throat> Well, for James Red, I was using the photo of a guy named Eric Tamargo, a guy that used to trim uh, lots for us. Like he'd trim the trees and clean the yards and everything and haul away garbage. Or if, if I bought a piece of shit house for 40 grand, he'd clean up the yard and mm. take the stuff away. So um, I, I, I had gone online one day and I found his picture. I was like, fuck. So I used his picture for James Red, put it in there. Not thinking anything, you know, just more of a joke. Yeah. Because a lot of the guys were people I, I knew. Because I thought, you know, <clears throat> maybe if I need the guy, I need to know the guy. I don't know. It just felt like you get in a pickle. You yeah, get I could at least go to him and maybe try and get him to act as a person or something. I wasn't sure. So anyway, what happens is this chick, Mary, at the title company calls up and tell, says, look, James Red has to show up at the next closing. She knows something's wrong. So fine. So the broker calls me and tells me that. And I'm like, um, okay, well, he's got to show up then. And she goes, well, how's he going to show up? He's a mug shot on the Hillsborough County website. And I was like, well, I'm going to fucking go. I'm going to, I got to track the guy down. I'm going to get, I'll get him to show up. And she goes, fuck. So I call up Eric and Eric comes in. I say, hey, Eric, what's up? And he sits down. He goes, hey, man, what's going on? I said, look, I need to tell you something. You know, all these houses that we've been flipping, we've been buying and you think, yeah, 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 I know. I said, okay, let me tell you what we're doing, what's really happening. And I explained it to him. We're buying the houses for 40. We're recording them at 200. We're borrowing 160. We're fucking walking away with a chunk of cash. We're reinvesting the money. That's what we're doing. Fake people. He's like, fuck. He goes, that's fucking, man, that's fucking, a, that's something else, bro. That's, bro, that's amazing. He wasn't pissed? He wasn't then you were using pissed. his identity? He didn't know yet. Oh. I was using his picture, not his, his identity. picture, right. Um, so he sat there. He's like, man. He, I, he goes, so why are you telling me, bro? I said, well, because this woman found out something's wrong, and she's saying that this guy, James Red, has to show up. He goes, fuck, bro. He goes, who are you going to get to show up? I go, well, I was thinking you. And he goes, oh, fuck, bro. 
because that's a that's a big favor. That's a big favor. And I go, I mean, it is a big favor, Eric. I said, he goes, uh, man, I don't know. And I said, and he goes, well, wait a minute. I can't show up anyway, bro. He goes, you're using, you said you're using some scumbags fucking picture off the, uh, <laughs> off the fucking Hillsborough County website. And I went, that is true. I said, the problem is, Eric, I said, I've been using your picture from when you beat up your wife a couple of years ago, remember? And you finally slapped her around a little bit. And I said, I, you got arrested? I said, I, I use your... He goes, motherfucker! He jumps up, and he's ready to fucking swing. This dude would beat the brakes off me, by the way. <laughs> he's not a fucking guy to fuck with. He's like a street tough guy. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, hey, hey, Eric, listen, listen. I said, listen, listen, the only reason I use your picture, the only reason I use your picture is because I knew if it came to this, you were the only person I knew that would have the balls to pull this off. I mean, I fucking said it with a straight Silver face, Silver tongue. Oh, yeah. He looked at me. He goes, yeah, that's true, bro. That's true. I, mean, I was like, and he goes, well, I ain't doing Jesus it for free. Christ. He goes, I'm not doing it for free. I said, no, no, of course not, bro. I mean, I, obviously, I'll pay you. So well, what, what do you want? And he goes, and I remember thinking, if he asks for like more than like 10, 15 grand, I'll fucking change title companies and I'll go in myself. Like I didn't want to go in myself. I'm already on federal probation. Mm -hmm. So I, I was like, I'll, I'll just go in my fucking self. I'll have right. to redo the ID. I'll do this. I'll do. And he sat there and I go, so what do you want, man? What do you want? I'm thinking if he asked for more than 10 or 15, I'm, I'm, and he goes, I want $500. And I went, <laughs> say no more. $500. Jesus, God Almighty, Eric, are you serious? 500 bucks, it's five minutes. It's going to be five. So I argue with him like it's a big deal. He's like, no, man, I ain't doing it for it. I was like, all right, all right, all right, bro. All right, but I'm not giving you the money until you sign. No, of course, I'll sign first. Sure, no problem. I know you're good for it. Great. We go in. We go into the fucking title company. I, oh, I, I make him a fake ID. He walks in. Mary comes out and walks in the day of the closing. She walks out and sees me sitting there. She goes, Mr. Cox, why are you here? I said, I'm not doing the closing less... James Red shows up. So Eric stands up and goes, I'm James Red. And she goes, Hold on one second. She goes, gets the file, comes back, pulls out the fucking picture <clears throat> that I've been using of the driver's license, holds it up and goes, You could see it in her face, like, fuck. Like, what? I don't know what's going on now. Now she thought she knew. Now she, now she no don't idea. know. Now she's like, <laughs> So and so said this, and it didn't make sense. And it, this fucking guy, it's. She says, "I'm sorry, Mister Red. Uh, come on in." So he, she says, "Do you have your driver's license?" Yeah, I, I don't have my ID. I have my driver's license because I didn't want to make. I couldn't right. get the same picture, so I, I matched it up. And she's like, "Fuck." He closes. When we get to closing, he sees like ten thousand goes to Dave Walker, fifteen thousand goes to this guy, three thousand goes here, seven thousand. So she sees all these checks. He's starting to put it together. This is a lot of money. This is $100,000 is being shifted around. Mm -hmm. I'm getting 500 bucks. So we get out and I count, I count, give him his 500 bucks. And he goes, yo, bro. He's like, that was a lot of fucking money, man. It's a lot of money. He said, I mean, I'm doing it for 500. I said, bro, I said, a lot of that money goes back in the house, Eric. And, he go, and he's like, well, well, this is a big deal, man. So he leaves. Like a week later, I call him back. I need you to do another one. He's like, Fuck. He goes, all right, bro. He's, I'll tell you right now. I ain't doing it for no 500 bucks. I saw all them checks. I know you guys are making fucking bank. I went, okay, bro, bro, what, what is it? What do you want? He goes, it's a big favor. You're getting a lot of trouble. I said, I know you could, bro. I know you could. What do you want? He goes, I want $1,000. <laughs> I said, are you, are you serious, Eric? A thousand? Jesus, man. That's twice what you charge. Man, I get a lot of trouble. I said, all right, bro. I'm, all right, but you got to sign for it. No, no, I'll sign for it. We go in again. Boom, he signs. Mary was so fucking bamboozled. The next time that I actually call up and schedule a closing, I say, hey, Mary, can I pick up the fucking thing this time? Or you still got to see this guy? No, no, it's okay. And she lets me take the package. Jesus. Starts all over again. Da -da -da -da. So that's how, like, that's the only time I had to have one, somebody show up. Then I ended up showing up like one of the last loans like closes close for two fifty. I just showed up myself because it was everything was just so streamlined. It was working mm -hmm. so well. Right. Well, it seemed it was working so well. Yeah. Until the Allison thing happened, and then it all just kind of fucking. I didn't know it was. All right, let's keep, let's keep rolling it. <laughs>